Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crowley. I'm back with another video. This is the second and final installment in my brief series showing old illustrations that I did for Nickelodeon Magazine about 10 or 15 years ago. I will link to the first video that I did uh, in the description. Also going to link to last week's uh, Halloween video. Some of you might be saying, hey Mark, how come you're not doing a Halloween video? Well, I did one last week uh, for some crazy reason, and if you missed it, you can find the link down there in the description. This is the first uh, comic strip that I sort of pitched to Nickelodeon magazine, um, kind of still learning the ropes on how to create a uh, you know custom-made uh, comic strip for that magazine. My concept was to have a couple of characters that were uh, looking up at the clouds, and they get into a kind of a silly argument uh, over what the clouds look like, uh, what what the shapes remind them of, and in the very last panel, the punchline is that the clouds are looking down at them and sort of maybe it's going to start all over again with the clouds arguing about what they look like. Anyway, uh, not my finest work, but uh, it sort of got me started, and uh, I, I think you'll see that I did better work as I went along. Let's move on to the next example. Now, this is one of the rare things that I did for them that was not a comic strip. It was actually a puzzle. Uh, in which you had to start with uh, the basic pineapple and then figure out which is the next one in the sequence in terms of it uh, getting more and more uh, crazy details added to it. The thing to me that this reminds me of is the somewhat embarrassing fact that I did not know <laughs> that much about Spongebob when they hired me to do this job. You know, um, uh, my child was uh, still very young, like two years old, at that stage, and we had not started watching uh, the show. And a lot of you are like, you don't have to have a kid to enjoy SpongeBob, but I was so focused on my comics, I wasn't watching a lot of TV back in those days, and I still remembered, you know, trying to do this comic strip with almost no knowledge of who Squidward Tentacles was. Uh, but you know, I think I managed <laughs> using the reference to not completely embarrass myself. Let's move on to another one. Now here is the uh, first and only time that they invited me to do cover art for one of their special magazines. This one um, coming out in coordination with the Jimmy Neutron movie. I believe it was a, a theatrical release, unless it was just some sort of big um, TV special. Anyway, they um, wanted me to imitate a specific James Bond uh, poster, and I'm going to go ahead and splice that in right now. So there you see the original, of course, featuring Sean Connery. I think it was like an overseas um, version of uh, the Goldfinger poster. And uh, they, had the, they wanted me to really try to create something that was um, imitating that. And, you know, sometimes people ask me, Mark, do you feel like you ever made any mistakes uh, or anything that you um, are not particularly proud of? Um, I feel like I could have done a better job, frankly, and I would do a much better job if someone came to me um, with this exact same project now. Um, so there you go, folks. Something uh, minor regret. I don't think it's terrible, but I think I uh, definitely with the skills that I've developed over the last 10 or 15 years, I would probably do a better job on this project now. And <laughs> sad to say, it was the one front cover. Maybe that's why I never got to do another one. Now, this magazine came out uh, in coordination with the SpongeBob SquarePants movie, the first one. Uh, I bet a lot of you are familiar with that one, and those of you who are, you're going to remember the Goofy Goober uh, ice cream parlor chain that SpongeBob and Patrick were big fans of. And they hired me uh, for this quite interesting little project to, to do one of the like paper throwaway placemats that you might see in uh, such a restaurant. Um, what's interesting about the project is, you know, of course, I did this line art here, um, but I'm not particularly proud of it. What was really kind of the star of the show was this border stuff, which was supposed to look more uh, 3D and more real, like you were actually in the restaurant. And uh, here's the silver spoon that has the goofy goober on it and so forth. Um, sort of an interesting job, and uh, this is going to be one of um, the, the few uh, in this video that relate to these uh, famous properties like SpongeBob and Jimmy Neutron. There's maybe one more. Uh, but f uh, starting now, we're going to turn to a lot of things where I just came up with my own characters and made my own comic strips. 
Now, in my previous Nickelodeon uh, video, I showed one of these comic strips, it was called Pee on Peter, in which, uh, instead of having separate panels, I just sort of drew a giant environment and then had the comic play out as you moved your eye across the environment, kind of being led through it. This one, I'm kind of proud of this concept that I came up with. This guy uh, takes his shirt, uh, which is too uh, dirty to wear, and he throws it out the window. Then, you know, like a bird, it lands on the bird, the bird comes over here, and he just sets in motion, uh, you know, inadvertently, this sort of Rube Goldberg series of crazy things, one leading to the other, sort of escalating until finally someone ends up having to go to the hospital, or actually all of the characters, see, I don't remember my own comic strip, almost all of the characters that you see on the page eventually go to the hospital, and the guy who threw the shirt is wah, 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 the doctor. Uh, seven head injuries in a single afternoon. Uh, so yeah, I, uh, you're going to hear me say this again and again, but I, I take a certain amount of pride in these comic strips. Um, I, I felt like I had free reign to do whatever crazy ideas I came up with, and uh, heaven knows you're going to see a bunch more of them. So here's another one of these big environment um, cartoons that I did. Uh, one of the funny things was, you know, in coming up with the characters for these stories, they really were just like, you know, I'd invent the character only for this one purpose. So it would have some crazy name like Nigel, the not particularly frightening troll. And, uh, of course, the whole thing is built around... Uh, this troll is supposed to be terrorizing the countryside, but he's a gentle soul, and he never ends up terrorizing anyone. Uh, uh, in fact, he is a uh, aspiring stand-up comic, so he's supposed to terrorize the village, but he goes in and actually just tells a bunch of jokes. I'm working on some new material. Uh, anyway, uh, I am very grateful to Nickelodeon Magazine. I mean, they really did allow me and a lot of other cartoonists to, you know, just chase our uh, instincts and do all kinds of quirky oddball ideas, such as the next one I'm going to show you. This one, again, fits into that category of uh, characters that, uh, you know, they look as if they're ongoing characters, but they're really only created just for the purpose of this one strip. So here we have Zip Man Zap. He's got an appetite for adventure, or an appetite at any rate. <laughs> and it's a really just kind of a Buzz Lightyear type character, but all he wants to do is uh, find interesting foods to eat. Now, what made this one, I thought, particularly uh, interesting is the, that as you follow through the environment, you reach a point where the word balloons, because he's on this planet, uh, turn sideways. And uh, it forces you, I mean, somewhat awkwardly, I had to have arrows that would lead you through, but it forces you to keep turning, you know, as you follow around here, you have to keep turning the page so as to uh, read all the various directions as he travels around this planet. Finally, you actually end up completely upside down, you know, having to turn the magazine completely upside down. Sorry for the glare I'm getting there. Uh, until finally you flip it one last time to get uh, to the end of the comic strip. I think you'll agree, you know, some, some fairly out there concepts that, that uh, I was able to pursue. And uh, indeed, I, I don't know if any other magazine would have given us quite so much free reign. Uh, let's have a look at more of a traditional comic strip. Now, this is actually a two-page uh, comic strip, but uh, I thought instead of showing you the second page, I'm going to take you through the experience of uh, reading this comic strip so that you'll know what it was like to read one of these things back in the day. Uh, an uplifting experience. This uh, mischievous character goes into a gym, and he's got his bottle of <laughs> Sticky Stand Super Duper Glue. It's stickerific. And he's, his plot is to put uh, the super strong glue underneath uh, the barbells. And, uh, he, and to, you know, you don't see what he says, but you can kind of tell. He's like, hey, see if you can lift that up. And he goes over and it, it's like, huh, what? I can't believe I can't lift this thing up. And, he's, and he goes, crack. And now this was at the page turn. Uh, and uh, when you turn the page, you get the big reveal. Hang on. So hopefully a little bit of a surprise there as you see just how far I went with the idea. He lifts the entire building off the ground. And it was kind of fun because I had multiple uh, windows in which to show all the different mishaps that occurred uh, when, 
he uh, forced these people up into the air. Um, I indeed uh, was inspired by Mad Magazine, specifically this great cartoonist Don Martin, and you can see that I paid tribute, put in uh, one of his characters over here. Those of you who know the comics of Don Martin, I'm sure you love them. Those of you who don't know them, you should definitely check them out. He truly was one of the masters. And uh, here's one more uh, of the Tack and the Power of Juju character. They had me come back and do one more of these. This one kind of an interesting mix of uh, traditional panels uh, combined with uh, a, a section that, that goes into that kind of uh, wide open environment uh, uh, technique that I sort of pioneered over there at Nickelodeon Magazine. Then it comes back to the panels again. Um, always fun to learn how to draw different characters. Um, created by other people, try to imitate the style. And uh, this may have been the last time, actually, um, that uh, I was able to do such a thing. I'm going to show you at least one more comic strip before we wind this one down. So yes, here we have the, the most meta of all the different comic strips that I did. A, a comic strip that really calls attention to the fact that it's a comic strip. And again, I created, sort of custom created, these ridiculous characters. Those plucky explorers, James and Miles. And uh, had them really begin to acknowledge the fact that they are inside panels, you know, it's like, heavens, Miles, we're trapped inside a large box. Indeed, a poorly drawn one at that. Pardon my terrible English accent, although I know that any of my British viewers find it unforgivable when I attempt such a thing. But you can see the, you know, the, the panel begins to fold on top of him, and then it starts sagging. I mean, the whole thing is built around the, the characters interacting uh, with the panels, uh, had a lot of fun exploring all the different possibilities. And, of course, the big punchline is the hand turning the page is the, <laughs> the final crisis uh, in the comic. I really am uh, so grateful to Nickelodeon uh, for, um, you know, Nickelodeon Magazine allowing people like me to uh, do all these comics. And, uh, unfortunately, they are not available uh, for purchase. But you know what is available for purchase? <laughs> what a terrible segue. My books! I want to thank anyone who has supported me by getting any of my books, like Brody's Ghost, my graphic novel series, The Drawing Lesson, a graphic novel that teaches you how to draw, uh, my latest book, Manga Art, and of course, there is Mastering Manga 3. Sorry for uh, throwing this in at the end of the video. Hey, i got to pay the bills, folks. But I want to thank you all for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.